Hey y'all, this is Kayla with Life Oak Nest and today um, I've decided that I want to um, make this pot a little bit cuter for this little um, faux rosemary plant that I got. So I got this at Ikea and I thought it was really pretty. You know, some fake plants look really fake, but this one I thought didn't look so fake. It looks pretty similar to rosemary. So I got one of these and it's just in this like plastic black pot and I thought about painting it, but I wanted the base to be a little bit wider um, and it fits down in this little pot perfectly. So I'm going to um, put a little rabbit using paper clay. I'm gonna use this little rabbit right here. These are um, IOD, which is uh, stands for Iron Orchid Designs and these are their molds. So I have this little rabbit here and then I'm gonna use this paper clay and I'll link this um, down below in the description. So all you need for this project is your mold, your paper clay, um, your paint. So I'm gonna paint it, I'm gonna use these two colors, plaster, which is a chalk paint from Walmart, and then this putty color from Fusion Mineral Paint. And then you also need some wood glue, and that's what I'm gonna to use to um, adhere my mold to my terracotta pot. And this little terracotta pot, this came from um, Michael's last year, but I just love the little scallop detail, and so um, I'm gonna use this. So if you haven't worked with paper clay before, um, it's very easy to work with. I love I love using paper clay, it's a lot of fun and there's so many ways that you can um, use it to create different uh, projects. So I'm going to tear off a little piece of this and you wanna make sure that you just tear off a piece and then seal, um, seal everything else in a bag because it will dry out pretty quickly. Um, if you've never used mold before, when you're using your paper clay, you can also dust like a little bit of cornstarch into the mold, um, which is like a little paintbrush. But I'm gonna try it without it and see if it if it sticks too much, then I'll grab the cornstarch. But so you just want to warm up the clay a little bit in your hand. And then I kind of form it into a little ball and then I'm gonna push it down in the middle and then push it out. Okay, now you just wanna take um, a knife or a kitchen utensil, um, a debit card would work too, and just scrape off the excess and push down against the edge of the mold. I just like to push it down and make sure it's pretty flat on the back. Okay. 
And then to release it, I usually just start with one side and I'll kind of loosen the edges up first. And then it'll kind of just fall out. There's my little bunny. Okay. And I like using paper clay too because you can still, I mean, it's so easy to mold and work with while it's wet. Um, Put this little guy right there. I think he's cute. Okay. Keep that from rolling. Okay, so then you just want to take your wood glue, and this has already been painted. If you have like a really smooth surface, you might just slap down a little bit of um, chalk paint so that it gives the wood glue something to really stick to. But this is actually painted. I think it has acrylic paint and a little bit of plaster on it is what I was doing with it last year. Okay. And so then you just wanna take your mold and cover it really good with your glue. You're just gonna have to hold it in place for a little bit while it kind of starts to adhere. Just don't push down quite too hard or you'll mess up all the little details. So I've let this sit probably uh, 10 to 15 minutes. It needs to kind of get a little bit of a crust on the top so that you can paint it. Um, so I wanted to mention, I love these paint brushes. They're actually from, uh, whoop, they're actually from Amazon, but this bristle is just a little too hard and I don't want it messing up my rabbit. So I'm gonna use this really little fl flimsy one here. And I wanted to use this paint first. And like I said before, this is from Walmart. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing white. And then I'm gonna go back in with some gray and then do a little bit more white. This brush is kind of <laughs> seen better days, but that's okay. Chalk paint doesn't really need to go on perfectly. It's like if you know you can kind of do it messy and it gives it a little bit of texture. So I don't worry about getting it on really smooth. And 
And if you've got like a little bit of a gap in some of these places to where it's not quite pressed down, um, if when you finish your first coat, if that's bothering you, you can go back in with just um, like regular painter's caulk and fill in those little cracks or fill in those little seams. This is gonna be cute. I'm trying to put this paint, this white paint on the rabbit pretty thin. I could probably water this down a little. Um, so that I don't lose the detail on my little guy. I'm gonna let that dry for just a little bit. Okay, so I'll let this dry. It's not completely dry, but I'm okay with moving on. So I have this um, color of Fusion Mineral Paint, and it's kind of just a nice creamy gray color. So, I'm gonna use it next. And I'm going to come back over this with white. So I'm not trying to cover it really well. I just, I want it to kind of look, you know, distressed and And I decided to go ahead and paint the inside of this white because I thought it would be really cute, um, even on a tablescape to use for silverware. Um, I just thought that would be so sweet. So anyway, I painted the inside white so that I could all use it for something else if I wanted to. All right, so that coat is dry. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of this um, color as well. What's that called? Champlain? Champlain? Chaplain? I'm not sure. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this on. Oops, sorry about that. And same thing with this layer. I'm not really worried about getting good coverage because I want it to look um, messy. Okay, and then my last step, once this little part dries, I'm going to go back and do a little dry brushing with this white um, and kind of highlight a couple of places. So it's looking cute. I love this little guy. Now I've got this color, Sacred Sage, and I want just like a couple of little darker places on here. So sometimes I'll just take my finger and rub in a few places really soft. And then when I go back and dry brush with my white, it'll knock it down just a little bit, but.
Now I'm gonna go back and do the dry brushing. Um, I basically just wanna barely have any paint on my brush. And then I'm going to just kind of lightly go over this. My brush is still a little wet from washing it. And actually, oops, sorry about that. I think I'm going to take a little bit of this color. I don't want those, I don't want the green quite so prominent, so. So I'm just gonna, I'm just dragging my brush over the dark green spots in all different directions to kind of help fade it out a little bit because I didn't want it looking like, you know, sp splotchy, um, like a bunch of dots. So. I just want it to kind of have like an antiqued aged look. So that's why I kind of like the green added in there. Looks kind of like moss too, I think. So when you barely go over it, it's picking up on the texture of the pot and not, it's not really, you know, you're not painting it solid. You're just kind of highlighting all the different texture that's on there. So you just want to do it really light. Whenever I've painted something um, that I want to have kind of like an aged, like old look with like lots of layers, I've realized that the easiest way to get that look is to just do a lot of layers. <laughs> So get several different colors of paint that um, are similar to what you're going for and then just start layering it all on. I'm kind of wanting to highlight the little scalloped edge so I'm going around and brushing up so that it catches on that edge. You can tell in the lighting, but see how when I drag my brush across, it's picking up on the texture of the pot? That's what I want. Okay, so I do want to mention too, if you're planning to do something like this, you should definitely use a faux plant in your pot. Um, with these terracotta pots, if you were to plant a real plant in here and then water it, it's obviously going to soak through the terracotta clay and it's going to start messing up your paint job and your rabbit <laughs> would probably fall off. So um, I would definitely use these just for faux plants, use them on like a tablescape or something like that for silverware. but. Here's the finished product. Isn't it pretty? I love it. So cute. 
Okay, so for the, the very last thing that I want to do is add some of this moss down into the base to just kind of cover up. I don't know if you can see it very well, the black lip that's on this little pot. So I just have um, this moss and I like to put it in a bowl of water just to kind of soften it up. It makes it just a little bit easier to work with. And then I'm just gonna pull a piece off, wring it out and kind of stuff it. this around so it's not just stand straight up so I'll get a video of it sitting so you can kind of see it a little bit better but there you go it turned out so cute I hope y'all enjoyed this spring home decor craft I think this little rabbit flower pot just turned out so sweet. If you're new to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'll see y'all back next week for another fun DIY.